Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at the electric field caused by a single point charge. Here we have a single point charge. It has a certain amount of charge. Let's call it Q. We use the capital Q for the source of the charge that produces the electric field around it. Notice the electric field lines, they emanate radially away from the source. And you can see that as the, as the distance between the field lines increases, so the density decreases, the field strength diminishes as you go farther away, gets stronger as so you get closer because the field lines are, are closer. And the direction of the arrows indicate the direction of the electric field, which means around the point charge, the electric field emanates directly away from the charge. Now, if we place a small test charge nearby, like let's place one there, or there, or there, you can see that these test charges will then experience a force, and if the test charges are positive, they will then experience a force in the same direction as the electric field. Now, if we want to calculate the strength of that force, we can say that the strength of the force that the test charge experiences is equal to the size of the test charge times the strength of the electric field. If we want to write that in vector form, we can say that the force is equal to the charge Q times the electric field E. And that's the case anywhere you place that uh, charge, that test charge. So you can see that in this case, the force is in this direction. Here the force is to the right. There the force is at an angle upwards like that. Notice that if you want to express the force in terms of x and y components, you can do that. You say that if this is the force experienced by this test charge, you can see that the force in that direction is f the component f sub x, and in this direction is f sub y. We can find that by taking the force f and multiply times the cosine for the x component or the sine of the angle for the y component, the angle of course being this angle right here, which is the same as this angle right here. That would be the angle theta for this example. Now, if you want to know the strength of the field, and you can somehow measure the force that that test charge experiences, you could then say that the E, the strength of the field, is equal to the force experienced by the test charge divided by the size of the test charge. So this would be one way in which you could establish the magnitude of the electric field at any location. What we could also do is if we assume now that this here is the distance, let's call it R, away from the source charge, from the point charge right here, and this is the test charge replacing a distant r away, and we want to know the, the strength of the field at that location. What is the electric field strength equal to at that location? There's another way in which we can calculate that based upon using a point charge. We can say that for a point charge, the electric field at any distance away from the point charge is equal to k times the, the, the charge that causes the electric field divided by the distance squared. I say, well, wait a minute, what is K? Well, K can be defined in two ways. K can be defined as being 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, where epsilon sub naught was the permittivity of free space that we talked about in the previous videos. Or you can also say that K is equal to 8.99 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Coulomb, that would be units of charge, m is meters, n is newtons. I like to use k being equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meters squared per coulomb squared because it just makes everything a whole lot easier instead of using 8.99. So some people like to use 8.99. I just simply round it off to 9 times 10 to 9. Besides, it's also easier to remember. Okay, so now we know the constant. When we plug in the size of the charge, the charge that causes the electric field, the point charge, and divide by the distance from the point charge squared, and that gives you the strength of the electric field. So that's how we would calculate that field. In the, if you want to write it in terms of direction, and we're using this test charge right here, which is right there on the x-axis, then you can say in this case, E, the electric field, is equal to K, times q divided by r squared in the positive x direction. However, that only works, of course, if the test charge is placed right to the right of the source charge. What if we put a test charge anywhere else? Then you may want to write it a little bit differently in more general terms. So in general, instead of using the x unit vector, we can say that the electric field strength, or the electric field, not just the strength, but the strength and the magnitude, the magnitude 
Mm. The magnitude and direction, that's what I should have said, is equal to k times q over r squared times the unit vector radially outward, which is the r vector. So this would be the most general way in which you can write the electric field around a, uh, a point charge. And so that would then be, the direction would be radially outward away from the source. And that's what we mean by the electric field of a point charge, and that's how you would calculate it. And we'll show you some examples later how to actually do that.